Welcome back. This is Curtis Atino with Community Hotline, and my next guest is Dean Johnston with the Toy Enjoy Makers organization. How's it going? Pretty good. Welcome. Thank you. What do you want to talk about? Well, let's talk about kids and toys. Okay. Tell me, tell me something about the organization, please. Well, Toy Enjoy Makers is part of the Portland Fire Bureau. It has been since 1914. Kind of started with a fire station in Selwood. A little boy wanted a, it's a wagon fix for the, his little brother for Christmas. And it kind of went from that one toy to well over 75,000 toys now. How many? 75,000. We help out, just in December, almost 3,000 families and over 12,000 children. It takes a lot of toys. Yeah. And when you give three or four items per child, you, know, you can just see the numbers. So you have to have space and time. And, but it's a very, very rewarding program for us. And uh, there were a whole bunch of volunteers, mm -hmm. probably about 20 volunteers a day, a day there, starting just after Thanksgiving. And they'll push out 150 families worth of toys six days a week. So, so who needs the toys exactly? Well, it's always families in need. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a, the program kind of works around with the community and we have a clearing bureau so we, we help out as many families as we can not have any duplications. But it's low income families. We kind of all go by income from the federal guidelines. And if there's guidelines a little above that, there's always situations we talk to, but we do need to talk to legal guardians. We want to help out the parent that has a child at that through that time. And, and we just want to be able to help out the family. Maybe they have a little better time at Christmas, having a toy, you know, toys are, not as important as food or clothing or housing, but toys are kind of nice for the children. They make them feel a little better and the parents feel a little better about giving it to their children. And they'll have a better year this next year that comes along. And so the, uh, talk about the, uh, how, do, how would a kid qualify for the program? Well, for us, you need to live, live in the city of Portland. Okay. And a legal guardian needs to call us. And we have a call center and they're right there with the computer so they do all the input in the computer right way. Mm -hmm. So we know if this Volunteers of America or Snowcap or Toy Enjoy is helping out that family. And then they're given a time to pick up. We uh, hardly have any deliveries. We used to deliver quite a bit when we did, you know, 500 families. But when you do almost 3,000, it takes a long, long time to get that done. So. Right. But it's kind of important, you know, it's, it's a great time of year for us to get some publicity for the program, to have the public donate toys. Uh, bring them to the fire stations or bring them to the Safeways or different districts where you have different banks or wherever they have toy collection spots. And then we get together a lot and we sort them out by age groups. We still keep the age groups separate because toys are appropriate age group, mm -hmm. probably because something might be dangerous, you know, too small for younger Choking kids. Choking hazards. Choking hazards. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're not too sure if it says for three-year-olds plus it's not really appropriate for a 12-year-old, maybe. Usually. Yeah, usually. But we, we do that, uh, you know, we have, like I say, almost about 18 to 20 volunteers there every day. And I get to kind of figure out different hours and says, so you're looking, you know, 5,000 hours, you know, 26,000 miles in volunteer driving just to make a program work. But if you don't have the volunteers, there's very few programs that will work because there's, there's no money out there. Yeah. You know, uh, we work throughout the year, off season, trying to raise some money to buy toys that we can get a good deal on, you know, because I'd love to buy, you know, five cents on a dollar. Uh, I don't need to go to a toy store in December where they're trying to make all their money to make a living for their employees and themselves mm -hmm. and get, you know, 10% off or 15 cent off coupon on a Sunday paper. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather save, you know, I'd rather spend $30,000 for $100,000 worth of toys. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what is the ratio between donations and, and actual purchases that you can make? We, we get donations from the public mm -hmm. and businesses. So it's almost about 65%. Okay. And the rest will buy. Uh, and like I said, we get a pretty good deal. Uh, and we have some toys. You know, we probably have toys for certain age groups for two or three years because there's a lot of them. What do you mean exactly? Well, you can take boys, you know, five to eight. Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of thousands of toys out there for that age group. Oh, so that particular market is yeah, glutted. Yeah, it's really gone. Okay. You have a little trouble with the younger ones and the older ones. Uh, you know, we have to kind of pick and choose about what we can give out. Uh, you know, we, just, we try to give out just toys because we don't know about, you know, makeup, hairstyles. We don't do clothing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're kind of limited sometimes. But the nice thing about computers now, 
you know, we, we, well, somebody can help me, go online, and we have a wholesaler online now. Or we used to have to go to, the, go to the wholesaler, figure out everything else, you know, figure out how to ship it, what to get. Now it's just click on the buttons. If they, they say they have it, fine. If they're short of it, and you go to something else. But uh, what used to take you a couple of days now takes you an hour. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we help out throughout the year through uh, natural disasters, unfortunately. You know, you have some fire families that have a fire or some tragedy in their house that where they have to move. You always have help for the housing and clothing and food. But in case of fire or things like that, usually the toys don't go with them. All right, so it's not just a Christmas thing. No, not it's just Christmas. All year long, no. if, if, if there's a situation where a family... Sure. Yeah, and, and times we get calls from the police bureau where they've had to remove a fam mother and their kids from a situation, and, you know, they get them someplace safe. And, you know, we have no cares where they are, what their income is, or anything. If the children didn't get to take toys with them, we try to get... And our shelves are set up all year long. It's like a toy store, and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons so that we know if we have a fire or we have a domestic thing or a flood or something that where we can go to that you know shelving up there and pick up enough toys for a little while rather than going through a whole warehouse and moving you know 10 cases trying to figure out what's in it right so uh so is this in the fire department exactly or do you have your own separate well we have our own building okay uh you know we're kind of pretty well tied with the fire bureau you know and uh, we kind of like their uniforms and their red rigs and and all the help they give and the big yeah. shiny loud yeah, sirens shiny and lights. Light. Yeah, you know, I mean Santa Claus got a red suit, you know, red fire rig. That's, a, that's just, it's basically the same thing. Same thing. Well we have a lot of businesses in Portland area that have toy collection boxes and they mm -hmm. collect toys and, and you know, we always try to say businesses have this white gift thing at Christmas time or something like that. We say, Why don't you buy a gift for a child and put it in a box there and we'll come pick it up or uh, it's you know, we went to almost ninety different businesses just in December to collections. And then we go out and we give about 15 talks at different businesses that you know, will give us money and toys. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the families in need that we help that we you know, want to feel good about. We feel good about the businesses and the community in, in Portland and the Portland area that want to give to programs like the Toy Joy Makers uh, so they can help those kids. All right, so engaging them in yeah. some philanthropy. As I always tell them, it says, you know, that smile on your face is renewable. <laughs> you know, you can give you can give us the toys on a Saturday night at the Christmas party you had. And it would be a week before Christmas, but somebody will have a smile of toys for Christmas, and because of what you give. So, it takes a lot of work, a lot of hours. Uh, you think you're a good shopper for toys? You get something for a little girl that's seven years old, and you try to figure out well, what's the appropriate toy for her? You know, and we try to give each child in that age group a book that doesn't count as one of the toys either. We think reading and education is very important. Yeah. And maybe the family will read together and do a little better. And so uh, someone will ask for a very specific thing that say, I have a, a girl who's this age and she wants such and such. And yeah. you can sometimes, you can sort of not, cater to that? Not specific? very often. Not okay. very often. It's more general. Yeah, we try to, we, we do age appropriate toys. Okay. And we're not trying to fulfill the needs for anything. We're just trying to fill the needs for that age group. So maybe you could have a you know a game over here and a doll over here and a basketball over here and a soccer ball over here and you know a truck and craft items. It just kind of depends. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there for crafts and there's a lot of stuff out there just for toys. And I was intrigued. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the fact that uh, you used to do a lot of repairs on the toys yeah. back in the day, yeah. which we'll call the 70s. Oh, well, he started repairing toys when we started this program in 1914. They repaired fire stations just spread all over and they were repairing toys, you know, even in my era, mm -hmm. the, the 70s today. You know, engine, we had engine six that would take care of the trains. We, he'd give, train, give out trains, so they had to make sure the trains were all together and all worked. And engine 13 there and at Lloyd Center, they would do bikes and trikes, and, and, engine, and uh, engine 10 would do hobby horses. And we even had a, a, such a great group of, 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 of women in the Portland area. Very good sewers, love to give something back to me, and he would make doll clothes. Because mm -hmm. we'd get a lot of dolls in that didn't have very good clothes like that. And the, uh, these ladies were really, well now we have a group that does doll beds, blankets for the beds, or else blankets for the kids. And they just, they have that skill that's, so they're still kind of repairing, but they're doing new. But we can't repair plastic anymore. Yeah. You know, we don't have the time or the effort or the skills 
to fix plastic toys or electronics. If they keep getting cheaper, though, we could just buy new. <laughs> <laughs> so the stuff that comes in that isn't in uh, brand new condition, um, what, what happens to some? We have several outlets. Depends really what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, some unfortunately you do just have to throw away. Uh, others that go to some other agencies, you know, off season. We even have some of the crews that are retired that go down out and maybe they'll vacation in Mexico or Canada or someplace up there and they'll take some up there to, and the kids, some of them that have nothing there says they have no cares about Christmas at that time or they just kind of nicely have something to play with, mm -hmm. to spend their time and enjoy it and, and just, you know, not throwing rocks at a telephone pole. <laughs> Which is a good game, <laughs> yeah. but it, yeah. the toy is maybe better. Yeah. Uh, what is, tell me like, what is the craziest toy someone's ever thrown in one of those boxes? Well, probably that was donated to us. Yeah. Uh, probably the craziest thing ever that donated to us. We had a, had a guy come in, an old guy, you know, probably in his 70s, you know, really old guy. I'm getting there. So. Careful. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he brought this train set in, complete train set that his, he had for his... I don't know, it's grandfather or something like that, and wanted to give it to another child. Well, it was from the 20s. And we found out it was worth about $12,000. Yeah. So that was pro probably the, you know, the, we didn't give it out. We actually got a collector to buy it, and then we could buy a lot of toys. Uh, probably, and then the most unusual other toy was when they come out with new uh, dolls and games and toys, but they had dolls that that people thought the kids would like. And so they, you know, flooded the market. It was the, not a doll, but a toy. Like, what was the one, Tickle Me Elmo? Very popular. Yeah, nobody could get. Yeah, when they, now they're because, everywhere. Because the adults were the ones trying to buy them, not the kids. Yeah, we got one of them, and then the next year we got about a 1,000 of them. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe one year something's unusual, next year it's just so common you gotta get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But that's a nice thing. It's really tough for kids. They'll come into the fire station, their parents will bring me in about donating toys. They'll clean out their clothes closet, I mean their toy box, so they get new toys. And it's really sometimes kind of tough where that child will give you that, want to not really give you that toy, because mm -hmm. they've had it for a while. Yeah, well, it, it's such, it means so much. Yeah, well, it's theirs. Yep. You know, it come from their house and their toy box. And even though they may like that new one, you know, they, they kind of really like that old one too. Well, we, we usually, they usually give them to us. Do you have any toys from your childhood? Uh, no, we, I don't think we had toys. Though. I think it was just dirt and rocks. Wasn't you it? didn't save any no. of it? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure we, I mean, I, I, no, I didn't save any. Okay. You know, you have to have a big place to save all that stuff. That's true. That's true. But so, you, uh, I, I'm sorry. Go just say, let people just, you know, throughout the years, you know, look at the programs that, that collect things and do things like that. There's. Uh, throughout the year, we you know the, the fire stations collect it, or they can call and get the information from the fire bureau. Who's picking it up? Because one of the things we need in the program is space. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have the space throughout the year to sort, figure out your organization, figure out what you need and what you're short of, it limits what you can do the next season. So, and we can't collect everything just in December. Right. You know, so think about us. Well, I liked uh, something that was mentioned on your website was this idea that if you're going to buy a gift for some for for a kid to buy two and, Absolutely. and just to kind of have that as a thought in your head as you're purchasing uh toys for children that yeah. you know while you're there if you can get yeah. get a second sure. and and so that. how would somebody reach you to, to to deliver that well probably the best way is you know they can contact the, the public number for the important fire bureau toy enjoy we have a web page at toyenjoymakers.org that lists everything, how you get it. You can even donate online. It's amazing. You can just donate money. Money? Just give them Not money. the toys. Yeah, they can, they can donate online, but we have to go get them usually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah, it's amazing. The, the society now and the way our technology is, is we get donations online. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really helps too. You know, the, the, the bottom line is, you know, we want to help out the kids. How we help out the kids is the public, you know, and businesses and everything else choose us as an organization to help. And, and we appreciate that very much. Great. Well, thanks so much for your time. Hey, thank you. All right, we're going to go to a break right now, but please stay tuned for our next guest on Community Hotline. Thanks again. Nice job. You too.